Thank you, thank you for the opportunity to uh, be here. And I like this session because there's so much different uh, presentations here. And I really like to recommend the last presentation uh, because uh, this idea about really thinking about what your audience actually is, is very much also what we had to do when we tried to involve people into a project like ours. What was our problem? Well, we are um, uh, a platform, we, tr we work on a platform in which we try to work with an audience to transcribe sources, transcribe archival sources on uh, the population records of Suriname and other places as well. And we wanted to research, well, what's actually the behavior of our audience within these, this platform. We work on this platform since 2017, so we have quite a lot of experience. Um, and we realized that what we want to understand is the engagement of people. Not their attitude towards the platform, but how do they actually engage on the platform, engage with our uh, project. And when we did some research on that, we realized that most of the research done on this type of profiles, engagement profiles, actually done on well, natural history, natural science projects, astronomy, that sort of thing. And there were a few, well, um, profiles named in literature. I put them in the uh, left column. And we realized that we wanted to understand whether these profiles also work for, uh, uh, for the humanities, actually. Because we think there's some difference in the way um, uh, people, um, volunteers, work on these type of projects. But what we also realized is that the, well, we knew because we work on subjects which are very much involved, like things like slavery, things like oppression, colonialism, that words matter. And first thing we realized is that we don't want to use the uh, profile names which were be, being used in literature because actually they're normative. They seem to give a sort of Im impression in whether where people are doing it good or bad on, online. And we didn't want to do that. So we, that's the reason why I put this yellow uh, column next to it. We try to make them more, well, descriptive and less normative. Um, well, so short information about the project. What are we working on? We are working actually on a sort of database of the whole of population of Suriname, but also of the Dutch Caribbean uh, between 1830 and uh, 1950. And well, if you don't know where Suriname is, you can be excused for that because it's a very small country actually, but it's on the north of South America, but it's very much part of the Caribbean world. And what we do, we try to um, make these data sets, and we try to make these data sets not only for research, but also for the general public. So we always publish them for free first for the general public, and then we do research on it. And at this moment, we're working on the uh, civil records of Suriname, and uh, our research, this, this project which I present now, this profiles project, is based on the first part of that, the birth certificates, uh, which we transcribed together with a lot of uh, volunteers between September uh, 21 and February 22. Well, how do we do that? Well, we have two, uh, we use two online platforms. One is a Dutch platform that's called Het Volk, the crowd. And this is a transcription platform. People see uh, a scan of an original certificate and they can, uh, well, just type the relevant information from the certificate into a sort of data set. The next thing we use, mainly for communication and information, is a forum called Ning. Of course, Het Volk does not have a forum opportunity, so we needed another way to engage with people because we realized from earlier projects that it's very important to have a place where people can co come together online. They need to talk to each other, they need to answer each other's questions. And that's the main function from the Ning Forum. Uh, it's a place where people can ask questions, can share new findings they find in the, in the uh, scan. For example, I found my grandfather in the scan. Well, that's a great news. So do you want to share that sort of information? It's also a way for people to um, uh, get one way of working. So they discipline each other, as it were, online, to, on this forum. 
Well, the data description, I will be short about this. Uh, in this five months this project uh, run, there were 654 people involved and they added uh, 163,850 entries. Um, the median was 38, the mean number was 250, and that means that some people did a lot of work, and that was true, because the maximum number of entries per participant was more than 7,000. At the same time, the Ning forum was not used by everyone. Only 171 people actually were involved in this Ning forum. You have to be sure this does not mean that only these 171 people uh, saw the forum, but the, these were the ones who actually made the contribution on the forum. So there were more, lot, probably more people reading it, but we cannot be sure because it was not registered. We tried to uh, find out uh, four elements which, always which are always mentioned in the literature. Activity duration, the number of days people are actually involved from the first day entry to the last entry. Activity ratio, the number of entries per day um, divided to the activity duration. Periodic peri periodicity, sorry for my pronunciation. Uh, the number of inactive days between sessions. And the daily devoted time. How much time did they actually uh, devoted to this project during entry days? Um, and we realized that there are actually um, five types of um, well, um, profiles. One-time visitor, people who only come one time online do probably one or two uh, entries and then stop. The one-day visitor, people who work for a day or sometimes two days on the platform and then stop. The intermittent people, uh, people who, well, only for a short time are active, but during this time they have normally do quite a lot of work. Occasionals, people who are staying on the platform for a long time but only do a limited amount of work during this time, but they stay active. And the consistent workers. The consistent workers are people who are very active, stay active on the platform, often for a long time. And when we looked at the forum activities, we saw, well, the same uh, profiles, but we saw al also a few different uh, pro um, uh, profiles, for example, a spurt profile in which people were really short active, but they were, well, they stayed active for a few days uh, in one go and then they uh, went away from the forum as well. Um, these numbers, especially when you look at uh, uh, profiles, they are all relevant, and especially when you look at the number of entrants. For example, this consistent group is actually uh, more than a quarter of all people, the largest group within this uh, project. Um, but even occasional ones, which are, well, they do only a limited amount of work, but they stay on for a long time, still make quite a significant contribution together with the intermittent one. And when you combine them together, you can also see that um, it's good to not only look at what people actually do on a transcription platform, but also look at what they do at the forum. Because they are, well, they are related to each other, of course. You can see that the consistent uh, people from the consistent profile actually also uh, adding the most to the forum. But at the same time, especially the occasionals, there are a few people of, from that group who are not active, really active on the transcription platform, but act uh, quite intensively on the uh, forum. So they add information, they help people, as it were, to understand what they were actually looking at when they are transcribing. And, um, well, if I want to give this some conclusions, um, the first thing is that, yeah, we do see the same uh, profiles which also uh, visible in natural sciences profiles. But there's one exception, which is the occasional profile. There seems to be a, lot, a group of people who are involved in this history, this history of uh, Suriname, this history of colonialism, of slavery, of uh, um, indentured labor, uh, and they, um, they want to stay involved, but they're not active uh, contributors. They um, put only a limited number of contributions, uh, but they 
uh, still remain with the project. Also because also we have all sorts of uh, media outlets in which we get people, uh, keep people involved. The second thing is that uh, in the, our project, um, it's not the one-time visitor which is the largest group. On most natural science profiles, actually on all projects I could find, the biggest group is always the one-time visitor. People try something and then they go away from the project. But in our project, it was the consistent, the occasional and the intermittent group, especially the consistent group which stays with the project. So there is a lot of opportunity here for humanities projects to work on this type of online um, uh, transcription projects. Uh, you can also see this because the Gini coefficients, which means uh, how, which part of the people is actually doing the work, is very low. It means that um, the workload was spread over a large group of people, while in the most other projects, the Gini coefficient was very high, which meant that only a very small group is actually doing all the work, and other people are not. Um, there's, um, and I think that's an important one, but it's something we have to work on. There seems to be no, not one optimum, not one optimal role in the citizen science, citizen humanities project, because different volunteers seem to add different elements to the project. You have the people who work on uh, every day um, transcribing new things. You have people who add information to it, make, well, uh, make the information online more relevant for other people as well. You have people who actually spread the word on social media, on, uh, but also with live meetings, telling about these projects and getting other people involved. We still get new volunteers in the project, which I think is quite a feat. And the last thing, and I already mentioned at the start, language matters. And um, what we have learned from this project from the start is that it's really relevant to uh, give people the impression that they are part of a group. We are in this together. Uh, especially because we work with an um, element like slavery. It's, you can easily get into conflicts online within the group of volunteers. But if you show people that this is not a uh, nice history, this is a nasty history, but it's our history. And if we work on that together, then you can see that people feel responsible for it. They feel connected to it. They want to be there together. And that means that people start to, uh, uh, well, they see it as their own project, and that makes them stay in the project. And that's why we really wanted to change the terms, because we don't want to have this normative way. We want to show that every uh, person, every volunteer in this project is important. I want to step with that.